Welcome to the Dreams of Consciousness podcast. If you'd be so kind, would you mind introducing yourself? Uh, Donnie G from Chasm Dweller, vocalist. And Donnie, how would you describe the music of Chasm Dweller? Um, black and death, doom, influence, black and death metal, basically. Now, I should mention that uh, in Chasm Dweller, there are two of you, right? Yourself and your partner, Zach Smith. Yeah, Zach Smith. Yeah, I do vocals. He does all, all everything else, basically. Uh, so we'll we'll get into the breakdown of, of duties in a little bit. Can you tell me a little bit about how you how you met Zach and how the two of you decided to start working together? Um, well, we're both from Ontario. I I've been we both been playing in bands for like you know since we were kids or whatever, and we kind of met each other through you know our our bands playing similar shows, and then eventually decided to collab on some stuff and then the chasm dweller kind of became became the the main focus so yeah pretty much just through music just the metal scene local metal scenes so uh, you mentioned uh, you guys decided to to collab on some stuff i should mention that the two of you have a, a few different projects together oh yeah yeah we've done a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh in terms of Chasm Dweller and the uh, the kind of music that you guys make for that project, um, how did how did you arrive at that sound? What was it that made you decide to uh, to do this as you described the black and death metal sound? Uh, it just it kind of just continually evolved. Like because originally we were kind of more doom based. Like we had a lot more doom influence, and a lot of this is like Zach's songwriting and stuff. So. It, it just kind of evolved like each each project that we seem to have seems to you know that thankfully evolve right because like you know didn't want to get stagnant doing the same you know the same type of style so it's just like the evolution of the project really now is the i guess we'll we'll jump into a discussion of your songwriting but is the approach to songwriting for Casim dweller different than it is for the other projects like let's say uh Malgoth or anguish uh well anguish i i play all the instruments in that but uh no it's essentially the same thing as Malgoth. we kind of just you know go back and forth and i usually do the lyrics but in Malgoth, we got steve he does he also does vocals and writes the lyrics and so just what uh, just i don't know just kind of get ideas together and just go from there really Zach, Zach usually has you know the, the basis for the songs down. He's the mastermind in that. So, does Zach uh, uh, basically write all the music himself before you hear it? He yeah he writes he writes all the riffs, does all the drum program, plays guitar and bass and everything on that. And at what point do you come in with the vocals and the lyrics? Does he send you demos and then uh, you you come up with the ideas uh, based on that? Yeah, we usually demo everything out first, but it's usually a pretty quick process, really. Like most of our albums we've done inside of like two weeks, inside of a week sometimes. So, yeah, I usually just write everything or we, we kind of write at the same time. Like I'll, I'll have a bunch of concepts and stuff and then he'll have concepts and we'll just get it together. You know, like a graduate, more of a gradual thing, but sometimes it is really fast. Uh, now, when you say concepts, uh, do you mean both musical and lyrical concepts? Do you come up with musical concepts for Chasm Dweller as well? I, I don't. No, not for Chasm Dweller, no. M maybe, like, just some ideas and stuff, but I don't play. Like, I don't play guitar in the band, so Zach would come up with the concept. I would come up with more of, like, the lyrical premise, I guess. Now, uh, is, there a, is there a theme to the lyrics that you write for Chasm Dweller? Like, does uh, Chasm Dweller have an overarching theme to the lyrics, or is it just whatever you uh, you come up with at the time? Uh, kind of just like per project, like what uh, the invoking the wrath of the seventh circle was more like occult based lyrical themes, and then Bacterial Lotus is more like uh, I don't know more scientific or like you you know like more. Uh, 
I don't know what the word I'm thinking of. More more science based, I guess. More all about you know bacteria and swamps and things like that. Whereas like Flesh Crusade was like just more straight, just straight, uh, straightforward, brutal death. Uh, lyrically, anyway, and musically, I guess. So you mentioned uh, invoking the wrath. Uh, that was your first album. Uh, you guys released that in 2019. Uh, would you say that the the sound has? I mean, you, you mentioned having more of a doom kind of sound uh, earlier on. Uh, would you say that the sound has evolved to include more slam elements over the years? Uh, maybe people seem to think that. I guess it 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 seems. To back to have backed off the doom aspect of of things, like because I think invoking was the last, like the last one where it was still fairly doomy, but it was it was going more towards the straight black and death, or I guess slam, or you know more just brutal death aspect. So yeah, that would probably be the last one that like had more elements of doom for sure. Uh, in terms of the um, uh. The change in the sound of the way the sound has evolved uh was it conscious at all on on either your part or zach's part or both of your uh, uh intentions or do you think it was just something that that happened uh over the course of time um i'm not sure i may have to ask zach that but uh i i think it's kind of it was kind of intentional because like we're, we're both you know kind of I, di I didn't want to make the same album i know he didn't want to keep making the same album or whatever like i know a lot of bands like just kind of have their sound and then continually just like you know stick with that formula but i wouldn't say that chasm voter is that formula driven especially now it just i don't know kind of evolved on its own i'm not sure if it's intentional or not really i mean when you hear the songs and you hear that they're um they're moving in a different direction or different from what has uh has been sent to you before uh what what is that discussion like um do you guys talk about the sound at all or uh do you just kind of take it as it comes we just kind of take it as it comes really like we, we have the like it it has to be heavy and like we we love the long songs and all that so yeah just kind of take it as it comes and then whatever you know the new stuff kind of just evolves into what it becomes i guess so let's talk about the latest release it's called it's called flesh crusade and it came out in september of 2021 uh yeah. tell me a little bit about this album tell me about uh how it came together and some of the concepts that you guys had for this uh this release we were just trying to just basically go full bore of just heaviness and brutality with that one and that was a that was a quick album like we made it in like under two weeks i think so yeah just just straight heavy wanted to try to do like the longest song we could on there and just just really heavy not as uh definitely more guttural vocals i did on there whereas like bacterial lotus was more like like uh kind of hook driven maybe or something like that but not maybe not as guttural but yeah just kind of came together tried to make it as heavy as possible and you know, just have some gory concept on that one because we hadn't really done that yet. So, so uh, you mentioned this this came together in about two weeks. Uh, uh, when did you guys start working on it? Oh, I don't remember the specific date to be honest, but it it was like probably a week and a half or two weeks. Like we're we're usually pretty fast. We we do like so much. We've done so much music together, so it's like we kind of kind of have like you know just a uh just a common goal in mind so it, it usually doesn't really take too long like I, i'm pretty sure it was under two weeks would you say you started like maybe mid 2021 oh yeah yeah it was, it was 2021 i'm just kind of spacing out the exact date but yeah it was a quick process for sure uh, we spoke a little bit about the um, the way the sound has has evolved. Uh, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, having having more gore oriented lyrics. Um, in terms of um, 
well, specifically this release, how do you compare this release to uh, Invoking the Wrath of the Seventh Circle, your first release? Um, like, uh, how do I compare it? How? Like, uh, musically, like, uh, uh, in terms of uh, the sound, in terms of uh, the lyrics, in terms of the, the concept overall? Uh, well, Bacteria Lotus kind of uh, didn't have as much of the doom element. It was it, it's it was similar, like at least my writing on there was similar, kind of more hook driven, concept driven. But uh, yeah, I, and then uh, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Back, invoking the wrath was more it was basically more of an occult concept concept album. Whereas like Bacterial Lotus kind of just started to get into the just straight brutal death metal more off than the sl like slower, slower songs, I guess I would say. Now, in terms of uh, the change in lyrical focus, uh, why was that? Why did you move more from uh, the occult on the first uh, release to uh, the more gore oriented themes on this one? Uh, I don't know. I just, just like to keep it fresh, find new, like new topics to write about really. I, I don't want to, like, I, I know Zach wouldn't want, I don't really want to just really repeat the same album or like the, the same thing, right. Be talking about the same stuff. So just tried to keep it interesting and keep it fresh, keep it, uh, yeah just like just interesting like to us anyway like we, we do like what we like first and then like you know if people like it like they like it so. is there anything specifically that inspires you like where do you usually get your ideas from uh like lyrically yeah. uh, um just like reading old occult books sometimes movies sometimes just you know just thinking you know but no, not no, no one thing in particular. Just like whatever I'm feeling that day. But I like to do a little research usually. And uh, what form does does a research take? Uh, well, just could be anything really. Just different life things, you know. Reading deep stuff, you know. I mean, dreams maybe. When you're doing the, uh, uh, I, as you described it, the more scientific, as you described it, the more scientific uh, kind of lyrics for Bacteria Lotus, um, was there a lot of uh, uh, reading articles in, in science magazines or anything like that? No, not, not really for that one. No, we just kind of had the concept and then just built off the concept, really. Like the concept of swamps, you know, like, you know, the mitochondria evolving and like, you know, just things like that. So it's kind of, kind of built, went from there. Not a lot of like, like people probably think it was inspired by like movies, like certain, but it like not, not, not from my perspective anyway. So it wasn't like a carcass thing where you had a bunch of medical journals and you were pulling concepts from something like that? No, no, no. Not that I wouldn't do that. I love carcass, but I, I no, I'm not on that one. No. So let's let's talk about the the recording a little bit. Uh, does Zach have his own studio? He does. Yeah, yeah. We both have our own studio. So, uh, tell me a little bit about a studio. About his studio. Yeah, well, let's start with how the music was recorded, and then we'll talk about how the the vocals were recorded. Oh, okay. Well, Zach does all the music and then he sends it to me and I record it all at my studio, which is right in here, actually. So. And Void Lab is the name of the studio, right? That's his studio, yeah. My studio is Malt Studios. Uh, in terms of Void Lab, uh, is it is it uh, like a home studio, like a basement studio? Or does he have a, um, a full studio with a mixing board and everything? It's a home studio. Both of, both of our uh, our studios are like in the box home studios. Uh, and Zach, Zach plays the drums himself, right? Or is he is he using a, a drum machine or drum programming? 
I, it's programmed on there. But Zach's a drummer too. Like we both we both play all instruments, but on the, the chasm is programmed. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious if uh, if he plays drums, how come he he uses uh, program drums? I don't know. That might be a better question for him. <laughs> uh, well, he 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 uh, he passed this along to you. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Do you want do you want to speculate? Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of just uh, maybe like I know it's hard to record drums because like I can't record drums where I'm at. So it's, you know, sometimes a little easier just and like plus, you know, drum programming is so it's so advanced nowadays that there's not really really not a lot of difference, like I'd say, you know. So, well, let's let's talk about uh recording your vocals um in terms of in terms of your setup uh what do you have i mean we're, we're seeing your uh your setup right now uh on the the video version of this podcast um is it essentially just uh just room that you soundproofed yeah essentially yeah uh, same old and then i just like got a mac pro and run logic i do all my stuff through there and then uh once zach has your your vocal parts does he mix and master everything himself he does he mixes all the chasm yet so let's uh let's talk a little bit about uh the other two projects that you have how would you just Sorry, how would you compare Malgoth and Anguish to uh, Chasm Dweller? Oh, it's a lot, a lot different. I would say maybe Chasm like our Anguish would be a little more similar, but like in Malgoth, I I just do the high vocals, like and Steve does the low stuff. So in the in Chasm Dweller, I don't like I do a bit of the high vocals here and there, but I I do try to avoid it just because I don't want the you know the projects to sound exactly the same obviously but and then and then anguish is like anguish is just like my solo stuff so it's it's a little different more like i don't know it could almost be considered punkier death maybe i've heard i guess and Molgoth is a little bit more of a war metal band right yeah the, the b steel uh hard War metal breaching on noise, yeah, like the black metal elements and everything. Like that. So, big difference from from Chasm Dweller for sure. I mean, was the uh, uh, which project came first? Chasm Dweller. Now, was the choice to work with Zach on both Malgoth and Anguish uh, just the fact that you guys uh, work together uh, so well, and so it was a um, it was convenient to to use the same people yeah yeah pretty much we're like you know we have a good musical partnership so you know it made sense to do it when like he it was his thing and he asked me to do the vocals on that so like chasm dollar was more like you know a kind of an idea we put together like well i think he had actually chasm dollar going initially and then uh we, we kind of started building but Malgoth was more his his brainchild both of them are his brainchild but Malgoth was more like uh because of the two vocalists like I don't we just kind of do do our thing he's the he's the mastermind behind the the bestial sound so let's let's speak a little bit about anguish uh tell me about the project tell me what your intentions were when you started it uh, just to make some songs, really. Just trying to make some, you know, solo stuff. I Like, I've been playing in bands since I was, like, 17 years old. So, like, most of my life. So, I, I always like to like to get some riffs going. And it was, like, I don't know. I just wanted to have some, like, it's very occult, but it's just more upbeat. Or I, I don't even know. But it just kind of came out how it came out. It's It, it could be considered punky death. People say it's kind of like Angel Witch, I guess, I, I've heard, but yeah, just, I don't know, just a solo project, just trying to have a little fun, make a, 
like just a debut seven really was my goal with that I'd, and then see what happens after that like maybe be a full lp at one point i'm not too sure in terms of your songwriting for anguish how do you usually start what do you say anguish is a, a riff band like a riff band yeah do you start with a riff yeah yeah pretty much just come up with riffs and then go from there write just write the lyrics but the riff usually start started all the english songs yeah for sure and uh what are Zach's contributions to Anguish? At what point does he get involved? Uh, he did the drums for me, and he mixed the project for me too, as well. And then uh, Grant, uh, Phil the Effigy, did the art for me on that too. Uh, so basically all the songs are done by the time you, you send them over to Zach? Yeah, yeah, I had it. I had it for a while, like, but just demoed out or whatever. But I had it... Uh, I had it for a bit, probably like a year maybe or so, but yeah. And then he put her together, made it sound real nice for me and then got it out. Uh, when did you, when did you record that? When did you start working on it? Oh, the anguish. Oh, probably like 2019 maybe or 20, 2020, the, the, the concepts for the songs anyway, like, but yeah, it was, it was a few years before it became something. I wasn't even sure like what it would be. So it took a little bit to get there, but it's, it seems to be being received fairly decently anyway. And is Anguish considered a, do you consider it a, an active project? Yeah. Yeah. I would like to, I would like to make a full, uh, a full LP on it to see, see where it can go. Anyway, I would say it's active. Definitely. And as far as Malgoth, uh, what was what was the intention behind that? Did you guys specifically wanted to do? Did you guys specifically want to do a um, a war metal bestial uh, black metal kind of band? Um, not really. Like not like maybe that was Zach's goal, but I think it was just just supposed to be some black metal, just some some extreme black metal breaching on like the noise element almost. And is it largely the same process as Chasm Dollar? Uh, does does Zach come up with most of the music on his own before you hear it? He does, yeah. It, it would be it's essentially the same process as Chasm Dollar, but like the involving Steve, our other vocalist in the in the project. And is Walgoth considered a, an active project? Oh yeah, definitely. It's it's very active. It's in the process right now, even if new stuff probably shouldn't be saying that uh well you can tease it if you want i don't know it's yeah up to you. we're we're always working on something something or rather now uh is that challenging at all to uh to jump between three different projects oh no not for me i do a lot more than that so i don't i don't i don't find it i think it can be i guess but me and Zach tackle it as like a, a project at a time, I guess, you know, so it's like, you know, we'll focus on the chasm for a while, focus on the Malgoth for a while. So no, I, I guess if you had to do three of them at once, it might get a little challenging. But. Uh, you mentioned you have a lot more than those three projects. So what else are you working on? Oh, all kinds of stuff. Like I, I do hip hop. I, I produce, I've been producing for like 20 years i do just any any genre of music i can to be honest uh, what does producing entail i uh, like beat making and then like i produce r b before all kinds of stuff i used to do scores a little bit not so much of that now but... uh beat mixing or making beats and then do you do you record artists as well or do you mostly just handle the uh, uh, the production side? Sorry, I thought I lost you a bit there. Do I record artists? Yeah, uh, when, when you say that you make beats for hip hop artists, uh, do you record them as well? I have, yeah. Yeah, I used to have my studio open to the public and stuff. Well, not the public, but 
not so much now, obviously, because of the pandemic and stuff. But yeah, I, I, I do record some people and stuff. So not that I am a huge fan of that, but, you know. Now, uh, is there is there any reaction from uh, people involved in uh, the hip hop scene to the work that you do in the death metal scene or vice versa? Uh, oh, I don't know. Some people like to give me shit for it, I guess, but I don't. No, no, not really. Most people like it because, like, I don't. I, I, I don't try not to deal with too many people that are like that closed minded, I guess. I don't like like genre is like fairly limiting. So I don't I'm not really too concerned about that. Like, you know, people, you know, you know, you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Uh, so is there anything else coming up that you want people to know about separate from your work with Chasm Dweller, Anguish and Malgoth? Uh, no, nothing, uh, nothing that I can think of at the moment that is at that point, but just, you know, continual projects from all of those, all of those projects, you know, there's always going to be a, a new Chasm album and a new Molgoth album and hopefully, and a new Anguish LP, but that might be a little bit, but it, it will, it will happen. So... Flesh Crusade is the name of the latest Castle and Dweller release, and it's out now. Donnie, what's the best way for people to get the album? How can they order it? Uh, the best way to order it would be on our Bandcamp, chasmdweller.bandcamp.com. Or you can also get it from various distros. Like I know Life After Death has some, Caligria, like most distros should have it. But our band camp is generally the best bet for our recent releases, chasmdweller.bandcamp.com. Now, I should mention that there's going to be a reissue of your, your second album, Bacteria Lotus, uh, which will be coming out on February 11th. Uh, do you want to say anything about the reissue and who's putting it out? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Dawn Breed Records is doing the reissue of the CD, uh, which is awesome. Shout out to that guy he's awesome he's doing a lot for us so i i appreciate that i know zach appreciates that a lot um yeah i'm excited for that don breed records thank you and is the the digipack cd the the only physical version of of that release uh no there was one on life after death uh cd and and cassette of bacterial lotus small run of each And if people want to follow Chasm Dweller online, what's the best way to do that? Uh, on Instagram would probably be the, the most active. So Chasm Dweller, at Chasm Dweller. And then like on Facebook, there's an artist page as well, Chasm Dweller. So yeah, that would be the, or follow the band camp is, is the best, the band camp is the best way to stay updated with, with stuff or the Instagram, any of the, either of the two. Now, do you have a page for your other projects? You personally, as a as a producer? Uh, yeah, yeah, but I don't need to be plugging all that on here. <laughs> no, or you can hit up the Anguish Bandcamp. It's anguishdm at bandcamp dot com. That that's all I'll say for this. All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to say? No. Thanks a lot for for the interview and everything. It was awesome talking to you. And look out for Bacteria Lotus and go listen to Flesh Crusade and go, you know, support the projects. Cool. Thank you, Donnie. No problem. Thank you.